When I was growing up, one of the big treats that we had at times was going to a big buffet like a Ponderosa, Bonanza, or someplace like that, where they just had all different kinds of food, all different kinds of meats and pastas and salad, if you like that kind of stuff. But just everything you could think of, they would just keep bringing out more and more types of food. The big problem that we had and that I had in these situations, though, was trying to choose what to eat, what combinations went together, and, and how do I put things together in the best way to take advantage of all this food that was in front of me. Well, you know, communication can present kind of the same type of issues. We've got all these different types and forms of communication. And, and so in, in this video, we want to just take a quick look at some of the different forms of communication and how they might fit into our different communication needs. So, so as I said, we're going to take a look at the forms of communication and there are five basic forms of communication that we're going to take a look at today. Um, the first is what we call intrapersonal communication. The intra just means within. So this is just communication that happens within you. Then do you ever talk to yourself? Does anybody ever talk to themselves? Of course you do. Sometimes we do it out loud, right? And other times we just do it in our head and, and, uh, we have these thoughts that go through our mind. And, and so we're talking to ourselves all the time all throughout the day. And that's really called intrapersonal communication. A lot of times it's just frivolous. It's just different ideas, different random things that pop into your head. But, but there are other times it can be more significant, um, such as when we communicate with ourselves in intrapersonal communication, in what we call self-talk, when we're, you know, maybe feeling down about something and then we talk to ourselves, continue beating ourselves up. Or on the flip side, we are able to kind of talk ourselves out of it and soothe ourselves a little bit. But, you know, self-talk can be a really critical aspect of identity and of, of, uh, of, of self-image and, and self-concept and all those types of things. So uh, intrapersonal communication is a really important and diverse type of communication, but it's communication that takes place within you. Interpersonal communication is communication that takes takes place between two people within the context of a relationship. Now relationship here is used in the broader sense in terms of it could be a romantic relationship, but it could also be a, a friendship or a family relationship or even just coworkers. You spend a lot of time at work, you develop relationships there as well. So it's communication between two people in these types of significant interactions. There's a little more to it than that. We're going to have another video on, you know, what is interpersonal communication. You can check it out and, and, get into more of the details there, but you know, at its core, interpersonal communication is communication that takes place between two people within the context of a relationship. And so it carries with it different, um, different kind of rules and regulations and guidelines uh, that go along with that type of communication. That's different from other communication. Another form of communication that we uh, often engage in is group communication. Group communication takes place uh, when you have uh, a, at least three people, minimum of three people, and the top number could vary, but you know, you have at least three people that are working together toward a common purpose or goal. And that's important too. So that you have that minimum of three people, but they're also not just three people that happen to be moving in the same direction, but they're, they're three people who are working towards something specific, usually towards a common purpose or a goal or have a, a common objective in that group. And so again, though, that group carries um, different dynamics and uh, there are different kind of rules that, that guide uh, group communication and different things to consider. So that's really a different subset of communication that's different from interpersonal and intrapersonal and the other forms of communication uh, in the way that we use it, the way that we interact in that, in that way. So group is another form of communication. The next one is, is everybody's real favorite here. I'm sure public communication, who doesn't love public speaking, right? And, and I know it's very, very intimidating and can, re can create a lot of anxiety in people, but the truth is public communication, public speaking is probably the most straightforward uh, form of communication in many ways. It's really a, you know, a list of do's and a list of don'ts and you want to maximize the do's and minimize the don'ts. And it has some pretty straightforward guidelines really for public speaking. Lots of other types of communication are much more gray, have more variables and things. And don't get me wrong. There are a lot of variables and things to consider in public speaking as well, but really it comes down to doing these set of things as well as you can and avoiding these other things. So public communication, uh, while anxiety is, is understandable, really is fairly straightforward and, and can be you know, one of the most easily mastered, I guess I would say with, with some experience and with some education in that. So, but public speaking does have its own set of, again, guidelines and rules that we need to follow. So it, it's its own form of communication then. 
And then finally we get to mass communication, um, which is uh, you know still a type of communication we're talking about here, communicating via television and radio and even forms of the internet and so forth. Anytime we're trying to reach a mass audience, as big an audience as possible, right? That's mass communication um, and mass communication does follow the same kind of general elements of the communication process as these other areas, but there are some differences. There's always some sort of technology as an intermediary in mass communication and uh, in mass communication, feedback is always delayed. Whereas in other forms of communication is simultaneous. It's happening at the same time in mass communication, that feedback is delayed. So there are some differences in different rules and, um, but so it's its own form of communication. But in reality, all five of these forms of communication is different as they are. They all really follow the same process, the same you know, transactional model of communication that the process is outlined there. Those elements um, are, are applied um, differently, but they're all still involved in all these forms of communication. So, so, you know, our job now as communicators, if we're going to be competent communicators, is to be able to identify, okay, what's the most appropriate and effective uh, method of communication, form of communication, uh, through which I can communicate with the audience to achieve my purpose or goal. And then to understand, of course, that, that you know, when we're in an interpersonal situation, it's going to be different than we're communicating in a mass communication situation. There are different considerations, different guidelines. And, and so understanding and, and recognizing in these different forms of communication is really important to our overall growth as a communicator. If you have questions about the different forms of communication, please feel free to send me an email. I'd be happy to chat with you about those. In the meantime, I hope you'll be able to better identify and utilize all the different forms of communication at your disposal.